And we are recording again. Hello, boys Welcome girls. back. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the last episode, we spoke about Jewel, who is the main character of Seeker. And uh, I'd, this episode is going to be about the changes that were made from the original, sort of like the idea I had of Jewel, which was, she's a badass! Um, that was that was basically the original idea for Jewel. Like she was badass, and she, you know, and uh, that thankfully has changed. You can't base a character just on the fact that oh yeah, she's a bad. And quite frankly, um, <laughs> there are other characters in 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 stories that I've written before that I I feel are uh, probably more worthy of the title now. To be honest with you, but. That's a good thing. It means that Jewel is not just this one-dimensional character anymore. Um, when I started coming up with the idea for Seeker, it was on the heels of Split Personality 1 and Shellshock, which are two books I released before Law joined the team. And they are in a very sort of... At the time, I thought, yeah, these are awesome. These are fantastic. This is like, you know, as, as good as they're going to get. This is the bollocks. Yeah, this is the dog's nads, man. But um, it 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 turned out that actually they're not very good. <laughs> they 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 need editing. They're, it's not that the, the story and all that is is bad, but they're not the stories that we're pushing right now. They're not the standard of Chaos Nova that we want to show right now. Well, to to be uh, on a little bit brutally on a side, they they need uh, second draft even. I, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a matter of editing. It's it's almost uh, more on the. It's a matter of writing. Yeah, they need they need complete rewrites at the end of the day. Like the 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 substance is there. Like there's a, there's an essence of a story in there somewhere, but they they do need a lot of work. But in those stories, they are crew stories. Like with with Split Personality One, we follow mostly the crew of the Gathram. There's a there's a section where we sort of follow the girls a bit more, like Luna and Rogue, and that's cool. But it's still sort of multiple people thing. And in Shellshock. Um, we follow another crew of about five or six people, I think. And uh, I made the active decision when I started writing Seeker that I wanted it to be a single-person story. Like, I wanted it to revolve around the one person. And uh, it really... It did... Originally, it really tested my ability to write because... With the crew stories, you can always just have another conversation with a crew member. You know, you can turn around to Luna and say, oh, I think such and such, and then an argument can develop from that, as it most certainly always does with Luna and Rogue. And, uh, you know, you've got more freedom. Whereas with just writing for Jewel on her own, uh, in the early chapters, you'll notice that I sort of flunk a little bit, and I'm like, right, I bring Raptor in because I need someone to talk to, God damn it, I need, <laughs> I need someone to vocalise her thoughts to and things like that. Um, so, that was one of the major challenges, and this actually carries over into another story that I'm writing, and this is a bit of a tangent, but I'm writing a book called Outrunners, and one of the ways I've tackled single people in that is that they keep diaries. And that is how they share their thoughts in that in that setting. Whereas in in Seeker, we've managed to do it in other ways, and and I think we've pulled it off perfectly. It, it works really well the way we've done it now, and it works as a single person story. And I also wanted to make it originally. I wanted to make it about the locations that she visited. Like I wanted to give people um, a sort of like not. <sighs> Uh, map is probably too strong a word, but I wanted to share the locations that we've created. And I wanted to be like, hey, check out this awesome place. And it was more about the locations that she visited and not so much the story. Now, however, things have changed and with, with Law's editing work. The story is carried by the... It's not, uh, it's not carried by the locations. It's, the locations are cool and the locations are real, but they're not the basis for the whole thing you know like there's there's a lot of all uh, yeah, there's a lot of story that is the focus not the locations now and that was one of the issues in some of the other books is that i tried to focus too much on locations and i was like hey check out this super rules and plays it plays this role in the universe and blah 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 and that that's rubbish it's nonsense it's not what we we should have done but with seeker we've we've 
we fixed that problem and it's amazing the the locations complement the story they aren't the focus of the story so that was another I, thing I, I think, wanted to I think you will find it interesting and this is where I will sort of toot my own horn here uh is that as the story grew some meat on it, the locations actually got more interesting as well because now the the locations have a story behind them as well. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and so, so uh, if you look at the difference between like Jewel Harper that we've got now, who is sort of like the, um, she's uh, <laughs> I don't want to use the word running away, but it is probably the most apt. She is. She's running away from something. She's not this bulletproof hard ass that I first originally came up with. Like she, she is fallible. She isn't invincible in battle and stuff like that. Like she is a person. She's got emotions, feelings. She's she has to deal with certain things that you know most pe most of us would find incredibly difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. I think like there's there's a lot of stuff there that that does actually you know rupture her calm a little bit. Um, and that is a complete difference to the singular hard ass, hard as nails character that I originally came up with, and I think that's important. Like she's she's more than just this one-dimensional character now, and that's yeah. Also, for for the record, in between episodes, Nox and I made a pact that uh, if he ever falters and and says something like the character is awesome, then I get the license to mercilessly mock him about it. Yeah, I gotta learn my lesson. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> and there, there's a lot of. Uh, I don't. <laughs> when she was the one dimensional character, she wasn't real. You know, like when, mm. when it was this one dimensional thing, she was not at all someone you could empathize with or anything like that. But now that she's an actual person, I'm going to say. Um, I can quite. I'd say actual person because I can quite easily, easily in my mind, visualise Jewel. I could almost to the point now of have a conversation with her in my mind. Do you know what I mean, like she's she's that real to me, and uh, I, I hope I hope that comes across. You know, I, I people. Pe this is the problem. Yeah, people don't see the original idea. Mm -hmm. They see what it's become. They see what mm. has been made of it, and. You know, I hope I hope it comes across like the that that she is a person. You know, I think it will. I think you've done a fantastic job. <laughs> of course, uh, I like to cut things out, so there's there's this little danger that uh, here and there I might have shaved off a little bit too much, and uh, where I thought that some some idea or some sentence or some fragment packs the full bunch of with of uh, the full full load of baggage that I know to be there uh I of course don't know anymore if it's if it's actually if it's actually coming out uh, from the text that's there now mm -hmm. so that that's that's always a a sort of a gamble if you will but this is this is the other thing though when we when we take it to our trusted readers it will it will be up to them. Like we we can just let them loose with the text and be like, "Yo, mm -hmm. read this, find all the problems, and let us know." Sort of deal. Or we can explain to them prior to this, like the sort of. And I think I think with some people this is important that you explain to them the goals that you were trying to mm. get to. Instead of just letting them loose with the with the thing, you explain the goals. And if you explain the goals to them, and they can say yes, you've achieved this, or no, you mm -hmm. haven't achieved this. That's also an important step. So, I mean, this is this is something that's a bit beyond the scope of the editing. I think mm, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't. It, it's important that you cut stuff out because I tend to when I write the stuff I write, I tend to waffle on a little bit and I make a lot of <laughs> sweeping generalizations and stuff like that. So it's important to cut that stuff down to make sure that it's precise. The reader doesn't get bored and the um, well. It, there's not a lot of extraneous information that they don't need, and also it keeps the flow. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. It also keeps the flow going, and that's that's really important. So, yeah, I mean, it, it it's better to cut in editing. Keep the original material. This is another important thing. Mm. Keep those 
that cut material somewhere. So you can always go back to it and reference it and, and make changes as and when you need to. But also explaining the, the goals that you had in mind, like, oh, this is Jewel and we wanted to do this and this with her. Does that come across in the text? We've sort of been a bit embedded in this text for so mm. long now and we've got our own ideas of what's happening and we've got our own imagination and our own headcanon going on, but does that come across to you as sort of like a novice reader? And you get a headcanon and you get a headcanon and you get a headcanon. <laughs> yeah. And this was my... Recently I, d I designed um, uh, Jewel's shuttle, what I perceive to be dual shuttle but this is going to be different for everybody who reads the book everybody is going to imagine dual shuttle differently <laughs> upon reading the book so it's not pertinent for me to do that sort of thing it's good it's good for me to have like these little things like, oh yeah this is like my headcanon collection you know this is what i imagine it to be like it's because i have this sort of visualization you can make up your own one that's cool but this is this is my one but you know the yeah it i think if uh, if the trusted readers say, "Yeah, it comes across." Then, you know, we've we've done it, haven't we? We've got our message across. Side note: We are about to summon trusted readers. We have already—I mean, I have already recruited my immediate family to uh, to read uh, the chapters from Secret Part One, and I'm, I keep adding the new chapters uh, for their eyes, but. If you feel that uh, you could be a trusty reader, it's like let's call it early access. It's 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 a little <laughs> bit farther than beta reading, I would say, but let's say early access reading. Yep. Give us a shout. This is a video, so you can let us know in the comments below, and then we'll get in touch with yep. you via all that. And like, uh, totally. <laughs> yep, and we'd be happy to share. Let us know. <laughs> That's yeah. Let us know. Yeah. So I think that about wraps it up. We've we've talked about how originally Jewel was one thing, and over the course of the story, she has in a way told her own story. But mm. you've you've brought a, a better character out of her as well through edits and stuff like that, and just general, mm -hmm. you know, digging into her character. And also the element of the world building, like instead of the the story focus being on the locations by doing some world building and bringing those locations out themselves they've actually become more interesting mm -hmm. and contribute to the story as a whole because of that it's not mm -hmm. like they're the focus anymore um, yeah it's, it's less about sightseeing and more about uh, feel of the place yeah and or, the, or, or even what does this place mean for this character yeah. And by extension, what does this place mean for the people inside the world? And this is all important stuff because, and I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here, when it comes to writing future stories, if we ever come back and visit Trilasi 2, which is very likely considering the amount of stories mm -hmm. I write in this area, we've now got this chunk of information that we can now refer back to and be like, oh, well, if we'll visit in this particular section, then we can look at this information and we've got reference material now for future stories. And that's important. I think that's a very <laughs> useful tool to have. And, uh, yeah, so saying that, I think that's a nice place to wrap it up. Yep. And, uh, I, I agree. And also I would add that uh, for a quick visit to Trilosi 2, uh, go check out a sample reading again mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to put all the links down below but basically on Nox's channel Chaos Nova Story Marathon reading Seeker Chapter 9 that's where mm -hmm. we visit uh, Trelasi 2 so check it out yeah. as for now thank you so much for watching yeah it's been a pleasure and uh, I look forward to the next one Bye! Bye.